Good morning, boys and girls. I am Buzz Lightyear, and I am proud to be your host on Cyril Box Cafe. That's right, everything you always wanted to know about the Bible in a box of cereal. Now, Space Rangers, I know you're thinking, what is Space Boy doing out here? Let me tell you what, boys and girls, I've never hosted. I've been a participant of Cyril Box Cafe, but I've never been a host. I just hope and pray, and I have my little fingers crossed in space somewhere, I will not let Coco Cutie Pants down. Oh boy, I'll tell you what. Today's the big day. I'm telling you what, it is the big day. Hello, Dan David. Oh, hey, Michelangelo. How are you? I heard you're going to be fighting. Goliath today! Well, that's right. And the Lord's prepared this battle in advance for me, and I'm ready to do my part. Well, listen, David, I wish I could be there to help you, but I've got a previous engagement. But I want to leave you my turtle shield, and it will protect you as you fight Goliath. Well, um, that's very kind, Michelangelo, and you and your brothers. Well, y'all have always been great fighters, but... Well, this is a battle that the Lord has called me to, and, well, Michelangelo, I'm just going to go it alone. Just me and the Lord. Oh, David, let me just tell you what. You really ought to reconsider my kind offer for my turtle shield. Ninja power. Woo! I don't know where they get all that energy. Oh, Frozone, how you doing? Yo, David, my man, how you been? Oh, Frozone doing well. Well, hey, I heard about the big fight today. Well, yeah, y'all y'all be praying for me. Well, look, before you go fight Goliath, why don't I follow you? And when Goliath comes out, whoosh, I'll spread some ice in front of him, and he'll fall and bust his keister. Can I say that on Zero Box Cafe? Well, you already did. So you think he'll just bust it on the ice? Yeah, it'll be easy. Well, Frozone, I appreciate it. But you know what? The battle belongs to the Lord. And I'm his willing participant. But, but Frozone, I, I'm going to have to respectfully pass on your kind offer to lay out an ice trout for Goliath. Shoot yourself, David. Hey, David. Oh, hey, Chicken Little. Long time no see. How you been, brother? Oh, I can't complain. Just fear the middling. I heard about the big fight, David. Look here. I want to give you my baseball bat. And you just stick it somewhere and all that stuff. And when Goliath comes off, you'll whap him on the head with my baseball bat. Well, you do know that he's got a javelin and a sword and, and all this stuff. And I think that tip on his sword weighs about 25 pounds. I don't think your bat's going to do a lot of good. you got to get him right in the knees. Well, look, look, Chicken Little, I appreciate it. But you know what? I, I'm, I'm just going to trust the Lord on this one. And I, I believe that God's got this. All right? All right, buddy. I appreciate all these people trying to lend their support and stuff. But I, I know in my heart what God has done in my life. I know how he's save me from the lions when they would try to get my little sheep and from the bears when they would try to steal my little sheep and, and how God used, he, he used me to save and defend those. And I'm confident in the knowledge in Christ and or in God that I can do this. Hey, hey David, how you doing? Oh, hey, ballerina Barbie, how are you? Well, I'm just on my way to ballerina class, and I couldn't hear, help but hear that you're going to be in a big fight today. Well, yeah, it's a battle. You know, the Goliath started mocking God, and I can't stand for that. Well, I'm with you. Look, why don't you let me let you borrow my ballerina shoes, seeing how you're barefooted and all? Well, listen, that's awful kind, but I've been barefooted most of my life. Well, these ballerina shoes will come in handy. What are they going to do? You give him a toe tail, a toe kick, like, kind of like Bruce Lee. 
Well, I appreciate that, ballerina Barbie. I, I really do. I, I think I'm going to have to go at it alone. Alone? Well, the Lord's got my back. Oh, David, oh, I wish you would reconsider. Thank you, ballerina Barbie. Boys and girls, look. The battle is the Lord's, and I'm just his willing servant. And I trust that God will give me the strength to prevail even when I go against Goliath. All right. Good luck, David. We'll be pulling for you. All right, boys and girls. Uh, I have been asked. Coco Cutie Pants left me strict instructions to go over Matthew 5, 16. Apparently, boys and girls, Mr. Marty really goofed it last week. I better put my shield on. It's a spit guard. Mr. Marty really goofed it this year by giving you the wrong verse for the passage. That's right. Let your good deeds shine for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father. That's the right verse, but he gave you the wrong reference. The right reference is Matthew 5, 16. Can you... Well, that thing won't seem to work today. There we go. Boys and girls, remember, Matthew 5, chapter 5, verse 16. Let your good deeds shine for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Well, we do have a galactic emergency here, and I need to get go and watch the big fight. We're pulling for you, David. This has been Buzz Lightyear saying everything you wanted to know about the Bible from a box of cereal is right here on Silverbox Cafe. Good day, boys and girls. Gotta get this old mask fixed. Well, thank you, Buzz Lightyear. It's good to have you back, boys and girls. A rare treat for us. Uh, again, we've never had Buzz Lightyear be a host on Silverbox Cafe. Um, where do we start? There's so many things to talk about. Well, the day, the word of the day is knowledge. The word, the lesson in one word is knowledge. Uh, boys and girls, the Bible uh, passage today that I want to talk about is 1 Samuel chapter 17. And that's the story of David and Goliath. Uh, you probably could tell me this story. Probably most of you know it. Uh, David was one of the younger brothers of uh, Jesse's sons. And uh, three of the sons had volunteered to be in Saul's army. And you may remember that, that the Israelites were on one side of this big valley and the Philistines were on the other side. And they had come up with some weird thing that they would uh, send the best soldier from each side and they would fight each other and that would decide who won the battle or the war. Well, the Philistines sent out their monster of a soldier in Goliath, who was uh, approximately nine feet tall. Now, you may say there's no way in the world that uh, a person can ever be that big, but if you look in the Guinness Book of World Records, there's pictures of guys uh, over eight feet tall that's just been in, in the last 50 or 60 years. So nevertheless, Saul... Uh, he didn't want to send David out there because David was probably a teenager. But you see, when David would tend the sheep back home, uh, he was a man after God's own heart, the Bible says. He loved the Lord, uh, talked to him daily, uh, followed the Lord, obeyed the Lord. And when he would watch sheep, if trouble came, David was on it and God had his back. Uh, the Bible says that one time a lion attacked the herd or the sheep and was about to make off with one of the, the sheep. And the Bible says that David killed the lion. Another time a bear came. And the Bible says that David was able to defeat the bear. Again, David didn't defeat the bear. God defeated the bear uh, with David. God allowed David to beat the bear with God's help. So when David found out that Goliath was not only challenging and taunting the Israelites, but he felt, he felt, David did, that Goliath was making fun of God. And look, that just incensed David. It made him so angry that anyone would mock his God or the people of God. David went up there and said, 
I'm going to take advantage. I'm going to see that this guy uh, dies before the sun sets. And so um, uh, Saul, um, uh, King Saul allowed him to go to fight uh, Goliath. Saul put all his armor on him, and of course, it was too big, too cumbersome, too heavy. David took five small, smooth stones. Well, it doesn't say how big they were, but five smooth stones, and he used a slingshot, not a rubber slingshot on a stick, but a long uh, piece of leather or cloth they had a little pouch, and you would sling that that uh, slingshot like this, and then let go of one end and hurl that projectile. Now you know a, a major league baseball player can throw a fastball in the 90 mile an hour range. Now David uh, probably had never played <laughs> organized sports in his life because there were probably very few back then, but we know that with God being behind David. And if a major league ball player can throw a ball over 90 miles an hour, can you imagine a rock? Hey, buddy, how you doing? You look different today. You're kind of chill. Can you imagine a rock hitting you right in the forehead going 100 miles an hour? Probably more. I'm just going to say this. If God is working on David's side, I'm going to say that that rock may have went 200 miles an hour. Uh, for me, that's not hard to imagine because God is in it. Of course, you know the story. Once that rock hit Goliath, he fell face first down. David, who did not have a weapon, took Saul's own, or not Saul, took Goliath's own sword, killed him later, chopped the head off. I agree, that's gross. And then probably held the head up and taunted the Philistines. The Israelites chased them, and the rest is history. Now, David knew. David knew without a shadow of his doubt, of doubt that God could handle that. David knew that God had brought him through a battle with a lion. God had brought him through a battle with a bear. Now, how about this? Did David know for sure that God would deliver him and that God would keep him safe, and God would kill Goliath. Maybe, maybe not. David probably went out there on faith, but he was sure that God was on his side. And the knowledge that David had about God and his word and his plan for David's life and where God had brought him through that time, he was a success. Uh, if we bring it on back to kind of like today, to modern terms, oh, did you know uh, Mr. Marty defeated Goliath one time? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's been many, many years. I bet it's been um, easily 13, 14 years maybe. Yeah. I went over to um, Atlanta, Georgia and defeated Goliath. That's right. Uh, I went up on the uh, Goliath roller coaster. That's right. You might have been to that uh, roller coaster or to that park, and, um, and it's gigantic. Uh, I don't remember how tall it is. It's huge. Uh, it's like the tallest roller coaster at the time, probably around, and, um, and they call it Goliath. But look, knowledge is what we're talking about today, and knowledge by itself is no big deal, all right? Just having a lot of knowledge in your head isn't all that big of a deal. Now, your parents want you to know stuff for school. They want you to be able to pass your tests and all that. Um, if you're on a game show, like you've seen these uh, episodes of like Jeopardy, where a guy has been on there for weeks at a time and he's undefeated and stuff. Uh, yeah, you know, that, that might get you somewhere. But when we use when we use knowledge skillfully under the Lord's direction, the Bible calls that wisdom. Wisdom is very, very important. Knowledge is good, but when knowledge is applied into God's will and carefully used, that knowledge really becomes wisdom. And with wisdom, uh, oh, wow. You can do so many things. Boys and girls, what is one thing Mr. Marty teases? No, 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 not Mr. Marty. 
I'm confused. What is one thing Brother John often teases about Marty from the pulpit? Hmm. What could it be? There's one thing, think about it, one thing that Brother John will routinely tease about Brother Marty from the pulpit. I'll give you a hint. Oh, yeah. Candy. What is Mr. Look, Mr. Brother John will occasionally say that um, Mr. Marty has old candy. Oh, well, look. It's not that often that I have old candy. Usually I get candy like Christmas candy after Christmas is over. Or I'll get Easter candy right after Easter is over. I'll get Halloween candy right after Halloween. But it's good for a long time. And boys and girls, if you look on the package of like M&Ms or something, they're good. You know, the freshness date is really what you're talking about. They are fresh up for a certain date. But look here. These M&Ms, um, yeah, they're about a year out of date. But you know what? There's not a thing wrong with them. Um, Miss Melly got these at um, uh, Crazy Cat. Oh, boy, this is going everywhere. Miss Melly got these at Crazy Cash Boys. And it's a big, like, 42-ounce bag that she got for either a dollar or a quarter, I forget. It might have been quarter day or it might have been dollar day. But it sounds wholesale. A 42-ounce thing of M&Ms would probably run you 8 or $10. M and, uh, chocolate does not go bad. It might lose its freshness, but it won't hurt you. Um, now, milk or cheese or maybe meat, yeah, those things can go bad. Uh, fish, yeah, those things can go bad. They can sour. But if you know that chocolate or even like hard candy, uh, sodas, all right, those things are not going to hurt you by eating them after the expiration date. That just, the company guarantees that stuff to be fresh for a certain amount of time. So I, I use my knowledge to know that. So how about this? Use your knowledge for a moment, and let's look at some Goliaths in your life. Maybe you haven't ridden the Goliath roller coaster at Six Flags. I challenge you to do it this summer. It's pretty cool. It's intense. But your Goliath, it might be something that you're afraid of, all right? Um, it might be that you're afraid of the dark. Or like my cat, you might be afraid of thunder. My cat wants to go downstairs to the basement whenever he hears thunder. Brother, Do Brother John's dog, Chloe, if you remember from his sermon Sunday, Brother John's dog, Chloe, starts scratching at the door when he hears thunder. Uh, maybe your Goliath is um, the dark or, or thunder. It might be a bully. Maybe there's somebody that bullies you and it really intimidates you. <clears throat> maybe your Goliath is math. Uh, you know, some people are afraid of math, like they just are intimidated by it. But look, understand that God can bring you through those things. God doesn't want you to be afraid of the dark. God doesn't want you to be afraid of thunder or intimidated by people and intimidated by homework. God wants to help you through those things. And with your knowledge and your trust in Him, you can know that the dark, for the most part, if you go into a dark room in your house, that room is the same day or night. It's just you either have the light on or you have it off. And the thunder, uh, once you hear the thunder, everything is safe. The lightning, <laughs> the lightning might strike you and hit you, but the thunder won't. So if you hear thunder, that means the lightning has already struck somewhere else and you're okay. So, um, let's think about, oh, 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 we didn't let you see the finished product of uh, Barbie's hair last week. I happen to have her right here. Barbie, I want you to show the nice people your hair. Ah, ha, ha, ha. yes, she had her hair done. That was our chemical experiment for last week. Barbie, would you like to help me with the memory verse today? Well... We'll let you wait for another time. Uh, I want to thank uh, Ellie Blake and her family for reminding Mr. Marty that I gave the wrong reference 
uh, last week. Uh, it's Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Let your good deeds shine for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. All right? Let your good deeds shine for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. I hope you will remember that Bible verse. Now, I heard of a few people taking notes last week. It's not a bad idea. Now, you know, we won't have a Zoom meeting after this lesson, but on Sunday's lesson, we'll have a Zoom meeting. So you may want to take notes. I thought that was an excellent idea. I do have a, a science experiment for today, being how we're keeping with the uh, chemical reaction thing. But before I get out the science lesson, I want to remind you of Kids Camp. That's right, boys and girls. We are still planning to go to Kids Camp. Nothing has changed. I urge you and your parents to go ahead and sign up right now. All we're asking for is $30 up front. We may ask for a grand total of $50, but we may not. All right? You may be able to go for as little as $30, but the when those cheap ones are gone, uh, I won't be able to help you. So if you don't have a brochure, uh, you can pick up one at the church. I'll try to put a copy online. But please, third weekend in July, uh, what's the date? The 17th to the 19th of July. We are still planning on going, and it's okay to invite friends. You have to be completed with third through sixth grade. Now, the chemical reaction for today is phenoloxidate and hydrogen peroxide. That's right, boys and girls. There's two little uh, glass vials in here. One has phenol, uh, what is it called? Phenol phenol oxidate, and the other one has hydrogen peroxide. When they mix, you get a, a glow. I'm going to turn off this light, but I don't think it makes a lot of difference. Now, I'm going to bang it up against the door, and then I think you'll see what I'm talking about. Woo! It only takes a second. How about that? It only takes a second when I bounce that off of the door. Uh, you may have gotten one of these before. I love these things. They're so much fun. Uh, it'll last about four hours. Now, boys and girls, remember the Bible verse, Matthew 5, 16. Remember the word of the day, the lesson in one word is knowledge. Remember, God defeated Goliath. David was in the battle, but the battle belonged to God. And God can bring you through your battles. Seek him every day, pray every day, read the Bible every day, and trust God and use your knowledge with godly wisdom to make the very best decisions. Until next time, boys and girls, Mr. Marty loves you, miss you, see you real soon. Now, I'll eat some more old M&Ms, but you can't tell the difference.